We know that the preview enables us to see our projects play out while we work on them and navigate around our timeline with ease. But we can also use this area to preview media before we add it to our projects, saving us time and making us more efficient editors. We know that in order to add something to our projects, we head to the media library, searching for a video, title, transition, or perhaps a piece of music. By simply holding our finger on a media thumbnail and dragging it down to the timeline, our content can be added to our projects in a matter of seconds. However, the majority of the time, you'll want to view your media before you add it to the timeline, making sure it's the right clip you're looking for. We do that in this area, aptly named the preview. To preview a clip before adding it to the timeline, tap once on any media thumbnail and it will appear. These icons you see under the footage are called transport controls and we use these to navigate around our clip. Use the play icon to watch the media through and pause as you like. If you want to watch your footage on repeat, initiate loop play by tapping the play icon twice. If you'd rather just scrub through your footage, you can do so by dragging the playhead here left and right, a great way to get a flavour of the clip and see what it's about in a matter of seconds. You'll notice as you do that, the frame you see on screen correlates to the frame your playhead is on, detailed by this white time code showing the current time within the clip. The right hand numbers show the duration between mark in and mark out points, which by default will be the first and last frame of the clip. You can set your own in and out points using these yellow trimming handles here. By simply dragging these left and right, you can pre-trim your clip, selecting the portion you want to use in your project. If you now bring that clip down, only the area between these two set points will be added to the timeline. This portion is then highlighted on the thumbnail in the media library with this yellow line. If you reselect your clip to see it in the preview and potentially choose another section, it's a really useful feature because you'll see what has already been added to the timeline, so you don't actually bring a portion of a clip down more than once if, of course, you don't want to. So we can see that dragging the handlebars here is an easy way to choose an in or out point to pre-trim our clip, but there are also other ways that can help you be more precise. You can mark the in and out points by moving the playhead to a position on the film strip and then pressing the mark in and mark out buttons, or simply swiping up or down in the preview to mark in or out when you've chosen your desired frames. If you want to watch the footage back super slowly to get really precise, you can do so by pressing and holding the play icon, which will open the incremental scrubber. This will enable you to move slowly through your media and get to the desired frame you need. The further you move left or right, the faster the scrubbing, forward to the right and backward to the left. On the other hand, you may find yourself doing a rough edit, scrubbing through your media to help prepare for an edit later on, for example. This marker icon enables you to do just that, helping you to highlight a particular frame you want to come back to. You can add a marker wherever you place your playhead by simply tapping the marker icon. When you do this, you'll have the ability to add a comment to that marker if you like, and also change its color. Both ways to help you organize your thoughts or add reminders to come back to later. Clips with markers will have the marker icon displayed on its thumbnail in the media library. To delete a marker, simply tap on it and tap the marker icon with the cross. Many editors use these markers to navigate around their clips in the preview, especially with longer videos, because as you can see, I can easily tap on each marker to jump between them. We can also use these two icons here to jump backwards and jump forwards on the clip, moving between not just the markers, but also the in and out points and beginning and end frame of a clip with just individual taps. Double tap these buttons to quickly jump to the start or end of a clip. The jump forward and jump back icons can also help me move along my clip frame by frame by holding my finger down on them in the direction I want to go single frame stepping backward with the jump backwards icon and single frame stepping forward with the jump forwards icon. So that's the preview. Get hands on here and practice using all of these transport controls so your workflow is slick and easy when you need to edit quickly. So there we have it, a few tiny icons that can help make a big difference when it comes to previewing your content before adding it to your timeline.